Hello guys, let's talk about homogeneous and heterogeneous equilibria. We know that in a homogeneous reaction, we are going to have all reactants and products in the same phase. However, in a heterogeneous reaction and equilibrium, something is going to be in a different phase. We also know that the equilibrium constant is calculated based on the concentrations of the reactants and the products. So, if you have a pure solid or a pure liquid involved in the heterogeneous equilibrium, its concentration is not going to be included in the equilibrium constant calculation because their concentration does not change during the reaction because they are just simply pure and they are just sitting around there. I hope this makes sense. Let's take a look at an example. So here we have carbon dioxide reacting with graphite forming carbon monoxide. This reaction happens at elevated temperatures around 100 degrees Kelvin and we perform it in a chamber. So let's look at this reaction in more detail. Here we have a chamber, chamber number one, which has one gram of graphite in it right there. And here in chamber number Number two, we have actually 100 grams of graphite, so significantly more. Now, interestingly, the equilibrium composition of the gas phase at a given temperature is the same whether a small amount of solid carbon or a large amount is present. So the equilibrium composition of CO2 gas and CO gas is the same in both cases. All right, let's take a look at some examples and practice this. Here we need to write the equilibrium expressions for some reactions. So let's take a look at the first reaction. And remember that we are not going to include solids, pure substances, and solvents in the equilibrium expression. So do we have a solid? or a pure substance or a solvent in our first reaction. We do, right? So we actually have calcium carbonate, which is a solid, and we have calcium oxide, which is also a solid. So we are not going to add those into the KC calculation. We only need to take into account the concentration of CO2. So KC in this case simply equals to the concentration of CO2. What about the second reaction? Well, here we have uh, copper, which is a solid. We have silver ions dissolved in water, which is going to be included in the equilibrium expression. Then we have copper 2 plus ions also dissolved in water, and then silver as a solid. So we only need to include, in this case, the two cations that are actually dissolved in water. Water, again, will not be included because it's a solvent. And we are excluding the solid. So Kc, in this case, we always start with the products, equals to the concentration of copper 2 plus divided by the concentration of silver plus squared because of this stoichiometric coefficient in the reaction. Okay, what about the third reaction? Well, I think that we only have gases, so we need to include everything in that case. So Kc equals to the concentration, we start with products again, SO3 squared divided by the concentration of SO2 squared multiplied by the concentration of O2. All right, what about the last reaction? So here we have iron 3 oxide, which is a solid. It's going to be excluded. We have hydrogen gas included, iron solid, again, excluded, and water in a gas phase included in our Kc expression. So Kc in this case equals the concentration of H2O on the exponent of Four divided by the concentration of H2 on the exponent of 4. All right, I hope this makes sense. See you in the next video.